Staying with politics, and despite the Rudd government's early pledge to end the blame game over water sharing in the Murray-Darling Basin, one of the country's most fundamental natural resource reforms remains a work in progress. A community discussion paper was supposed to be released about now, but the Basin Authority shelved it until after the election, deciding that it was inappropriate to put it out while Canberra was under caretaker rule. Recent rain has set some streams flowing to begin replenishing water storages in the Murray-Darling Basin after long years of drought. This is Burrunjuk Dam, northwest of Canberra. From here, the Murrumbidgee River meanders its way across the Riverina region of New South Wales to one of Australia's oldest irrigation districts, the Murrumbidgee Irrigation Area around Griffith. The MIA will soon mark its centenary, but many of its farmers now fear that they won't have the water to go on, that it'll be taken away and given to the environment under a new water sharing plan. I mean, wh where do we stand? We don't know where our future is. Let's know exactly where we go and at least we can plan. So the simple solution is take water off irrigators and run it down the river. It's just putting un incredible angst on everybody. And I don't want to see my husband lose his whole life for what he's worked for. The government's went out and spent all this money. They haven't even released the plan yet, their business plan, what they're going to do with the water. The sentiments being expressed on a vineyard near Griffith reflect the mood in irrigation communities right across the Murray-Darling Basin. The delay in the release of the water sharing plan until after the election has only added to the uncertainty and the anger. Um, the Gillian Kirkup is a chairman of Murrumbidgee Irrigation. It's coming to the heart of what they do. It's affecting the whole fabric of, of who they are and their families. The uncertainty is probably the thing that's weighed me down the most. I always think all these people have had breakdowns. How could it happen? But I understand how it can happen because you get to a point emotionally that just, it just keeps working on you. It's just adding insult to, to pain at the moment is the fact that it's been delayed. We don't know when it's going to come out. Stuart Ellis chairs the National Irrigators Council. For goodness sake, let's get the figure out there so that we've at least got something that we can discuss, talk about. But the Murray-Darling Basin Authority insists that convention dictates that it can't release the water plan while a caretaker government is in place for the election. Anxiety levels had already been raised by a study undertaken by the Wentworth Group of Concerned Scientists that concluded that there should be cuts to irrigators right through the Murray-Darling Basin, but especially in the southeast. Based on long-term averages, the Murray, Murrumbidgee and to some extent the Goulburn in, in Victoria are really the, the big engine uh, rivers of the basin system. Environmental engineer Tim Stubbs was one of the architects of the Wentworth report. I would be very surprised if the basin plan science is significantly different. And that's what alarms irrigators, because the Wentworth Group has recommended huge cuts in the southeast, as high as 65% along the Murrumbidgee. It cannot be 65%, just cannot be 65%, because the whole area would close down, and I'm not sure that that's in anybody's interest, including city people or politicians, to close down such a productive area as this. And I'd be alarmed as well if I was one of them as well. This is a big change and I think till now uh, the scope of the change hasn't really been addressed. Change driven by the environmental degradation that's become evident during the drought years along most of the rivers that make up the Murray-Darling Basin, especially at the end of the system in South Australia. Only seawater now flows through the mouth of the Murray, bringing marine life with it. And it would have silted over long ago, but for the constant dredging. The mouth's an easy icon to look at, but there are a whole lot of other big environmental assets that are suffering just like the mouth, but it's a little bit more difficult to see the impacts there. It's been years since the lower lakes on the Murray filled and spilled into the sea, or into the Coorong, 
100 kilometre long lagoon that runs down from the Murray mouth. It used to be a haven for wildlife until the freshwater flows stopped and the salt levels began to rise dramatically. It's just, a, just an absolute crying shame that such a national icon like the Coorong is just left to die. It's just unbelievable. Gary Hera Singh fishes the Coorong just as his father and grandfathers did. But some species have already disappeared. And if you don't have a sustainable ecology and environment, you don't have sustainable human populations. It's not now, it's my kids, your kids and their kids are going to look back in 50, 60 years' time and say, what the hell were these people thinking? They were really poor managers. Couldn't manage a 50-cent chook raffle. This has just been sitting here evaporating, evaporating, and each year it gets saltier and saltier. Dr Mike Geddes has been monitoring the health of the Coorong since the 1970s. At the bottom end of the lagoon, it's now up to six times saltier than the sea. And the only creatures that survive here are these tiny brine shrimps. Now it's switched over to really be like a salt lake. Where, where you expect to find these brine shrimps are in Lake Eyre and Lake Torrens and, and the very salty lakes throughout Australia. There are plans to pump the hypersaline water over the sand dunes and out to sea. But Dr Getty stresses that only bigger river flows can provide long-term solutions. And I think the time's right for people to accept a Murray-Darling Basin plan that sees a smaller a percentage of flows going to irrigators and more to the river. But the fact is that the, the whole system is, is, on, is on its knees. And unless we can get water back into the river, then it's all going to die. Henry Jones has fished the lower lakes of the Murray River most of his life, witnessing the decline of the area. He's now had a big say in its future. He serves on a community committee that has helped to draft the new water plan for the Murray-Darling Basin. It's our last hope. I'm, I'm building all my hope on it. I know some people up there and, and they do uh, understand what's going on. Uh, there are some that are rednecks and, and they think that water gets past the border is, is wasted water. Uh, they, they don't seem to think about the environment. Some water has finally reached the Lower Murray, carried down the Darling River from floods in the north earlier this year. Lake Alexandrina has risen about a metre and salinity levels have fallen dramatically in some areas. Quick, 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 quick. Clem Mason can use the lake water again for his dairy farm, rather than having to access supplies from the main system. We thank God for the rains in Queensland that have actually sent the water down here. He says it clearly shows how quickly the system can recover if it's given a chance. We've got an opportunity now to start clawing back and remembering that the environment must be the biggest player. If it's not, we haven't learned. It's the most ambitious attempt yet to reorder water use in the Murray-Darling Basin in favour of the environment. I just pray that the, 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 the politicians have got the guts to, uh, to bring it off. It's our, it's our only chance down here and I think it's, it's just once in a lifetime chance to, to get the system right again. The federal government has $9 billion to spend on orchestrating the change. Under our analysis, with the $9 billion, we could probably buy all the environmental water we need back for, say, $5 to $6 billion, and that leaves quite a significant amount of money to help communities adjust to a future with less water. Meanwhile, irrigators are in limbo, waiting to hear the detail of their fate. We know it's going to be disastrous, but for God's sake, get it out there. Stop playing with our lives. <laughs>